right, I have another iPhone 6 Plus Touch IC repair here. Uh, I'm going to do a little something different this time. Uh, first off, you can kind of see that the coil here over here is already kind of cracked a little bit. So I don't I don't think that's really going to affect anything and I'm not going to replace it unless I unless it doesn't work. I think maybe the heat got to it cuz it doesn't look like it was opened doesn't look like it was opened uh, before I opened it. So anyways, um classic symptoms, I am going to just replace Mason first and see if that fixes the problem. I think the majority of the problems are Mason. Um, I am going to end up replacing both anyways, but I just wanted to see what the ratio was in terms of uh, good to bad Mason to cum cum cumulus. And uh, as you can see, I got some Kapton tape around it. What I do is I just have a one inch tape, maybe one and a half inch, I'm not sure. But uh, anyways, it goes across the entire logic board, and I just cut a whole rectangle into it. Uh, make sure you give it plenty of uh, room for the hot air to get under the chip. You don't want to tape it too close. Okay. So let's go with Mason first and hot air gun at four I'm gonna go to four twenty five and five. I'm going to jack it up just a little bit. That's taking way too long. I'm going to go to 440 and 5. There you go. It looks like 440 and 5 are pretty good.
So that's the pad right there that I seem to rip all the time. So I'm going to be a little careful. Oh, that's NC, so no big deal. Just got to be careful with this one little stupid pad right here that I always rip. Ground right there, and that's not really. Okay, let's put some extra flux up in here. Uh, big ball. It's not even flowing. Or, okay. Perfect. Alright, that looks pretty good. Let's clean that up. <clears throat> Q-tip and... Um, Uh-oh. So Q-tip and uh, um, chem wipe. That's what I use. Keeps the lint from the Q-tip off of the um, below the pads on the logic board. Make sure you get everything off. And this is a dirty Q-tip, and I'm gonna get a new one. It looks pretty clean. Um, <clears throat> that looks pretty good, actually. You know what? I'm just going to run my hot air gun over it real quick. See if I can smooth out the pads here. I'm not going to do anything else with it. I don't want to go too crazy, but I just want to make sure the the solder gets is uh, even here. There's a few pads that are have some extra solder on it, but which I may touch up with a wick. <clears throat> Let's just uh Let's just run the solder wick over it. So nice and gentle, don't push down on it, just kind of lightly Not even on yet. It's on. Okay. So just the light, gentle brush. You don't want the wick to stick on the pad, and then you're gonna pull, and then it's gonna rip it. You don't want to do that. You know what else might work? Let me try this. I was doing this earlier. So what I so let's try this. Maybe this will be better. I'm just gonna get my tweezers here and kind of go like this, and then just kind of go like that with it. This is actually much better.
Yep, a million times better. So this will be my new method. And then, yep, this is it. This is my new method right here. Alright, let me uh, pause it for a second. Alright, let's clean this puppy up. There you go. Look at the, look at the pads there. Nice and smooth. All right, looks good. Looks really good. All right, so let's put the new chip on. This should make putting the chip on a lot easier. Mason, there you go. I'm going to use tacky flux just because it's a little bit easier to, to clean uh, once I'm done. Okay. <clears throat> Make sure you know the orientation of the chip. Uh, I know that the lettering faces this way and the dot is lower right. So I always do it from this side. <clears throat> so you just you really just want to make sure it's aligned pretty good before you uh, start heating. And uh, you want to so what I normally do is I just kind of pull it back, look at the pads here, and then just kind of make sure the corners are up a little bit. Like right about there. Like that. And then, for the most part, it's once it heats, um, it's going to self-align with the pads. Alright, so 440 at flow rate of 5. And let's go um, it moves pretty quick There it goes. You see it pop? That's the solder ball um, turning into liquid. Let's just make sure the bottom here doesn't look like this one came down. Alright, that's pretty good. So take everything off, 
<clears throat> and I'm going to get a brush to brush it a little bit, cool it down a little bit with some IPA. All right, so what I what I normally do is I'm gonna take this out over here, and I just want to look at the um, look at the solder balls, basically. I got cruddy fingernails. I was fixing my car the other day. Okay, so. So you can kind of see the solder balls there, okay? Uh, they look on the edges at least you can kind of see them. And they're definitely touching the pads. Definitely touching the pads, all of them. They all look really good. So let's see if this works. If it doesn't, I'm gonna pause it real quick okay I'm back I just tested it everything booted up fine the first time um, so I think on going from here what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the solder wick with my hot tweezers that seemed to really clean the pads very easily um, and I didn't replace cumulus this time I think, I think I'm going to leave it and not replace it because I really don't think that's the problem. Um, and uh, I'm always of the mindset to not replace something unless it's broken, you know. And to me, it seems like Mason is the bigger chip, and Mason is the one that fails more often. That's what I think. I mean, I, I can't really verify it. I don't think anybody can really verify it unless. Um, you know, unless you've done a lot of volume and you've experimented yourself, you know. Um, and so, if it comes back, it comes back, and I'll fix it. It's not, it's not really a big deal, you know. I'll, I'll, I'll spend extra time to do it, and, and it's, it's really not a big deal if I do it right now as well, you know. But again, I think, I think um, if you don't have to fix it, don't fix it. I think it's the better way to repair things, you know. Don't fix what's not broken. Um, so. So that's it. Um, thanks for watching.